Hi everyone, my name is Helena and welcome to my channel. Um, one of the things that I love most of all is anything vintage. Um, I used to own a vintage shop for a few years where I had everything vintage, vintage clothing, vintage decor. Um, I used to make and paint furniture for the shop and um, I had vintage um, fabrics and linens that I used to sew into things. So at any rate, I just love everything vintage. So one of the things that I'm finding that I really like these days are these vintage um, watercolor tins because they come with such fun um, art and colors and designs. I just think they're the cutest thing so these are a few that I have. And then I thought, well, you know, it's a shame to just have it hanging around the house, not doing much of anything other than, you know, sitting there. So I thought maybe I can utilize these into my own watercolor palette. So I started to set out to do that. And, um, kind of did this one, although it's not completely done yet, but I'll show you that later. So I want to do this one and I thought I'd take you with me so you could see what I do. And maybe if you come across one of these and you want to make a palette for yourself, you can do it. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is, um, we need to take this part out and this kind of comes out pretty easy. It's just kind of glued in and I mean, that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and these are kind of old and, you know, I mean, these are just old kids watercolors. So you can throw this out, um, basically get rid of it. Um, it does leave this glue mark on the bottom. And what you can do is you can take some nail polish remover and remove that and then clean the rest of the tin so it doesn't i mean it smells a little bit musty so you want to get rid of that smell before you continue so so let's get started doing this and i hope you'll join me and maybe do this yourself okay let's go okay so I don't have any nail polish remover and I think that's really what would get this old glue off pretty easily, but I do have regular alcohol. So I just put that on a cotton, cotton ball and kind of just rubbed really hard and it softened it enough that I was able to kind of scrape it away. Um, again, you don't have to get all of it. Just enough that, I mean, if it bugs you. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not really in the way. It's not that big of a deal. But while I was at it, I started to clean the rest of it with alcohol, which is really nice. I mean, that will keep it, you know, that will get rid of any of the old smell, germs, whatever. So let's do the top of it with alcohol. Okay. Okay. And that's pretty good. So we can put this aside for now. Um, until we're ready to actually start putting the pans in there. Now these, these are half pans that I purchased on Amazon. And I mean, I'll put the link below for everything, um, but these are so easy to find. Um, what I liked about these was they came with the magnets that you put on the bottom. Um, however, 
I did find out that these magnets don't really stick to the bottom of this that well. So <laughs> you can use crazy glue to put on the bottom. You can use a glue gun, which is actually what I have here, um, to just kind of put a little dot and then you put this on the bottom. Um, so that's actually what I'm going to do. And then, um, let's see, how many of these do I need? These are all the, the um, paints that I'm going to put on. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then I have these, which I think there are six. So 11 and six. So we got 17, we'll do 20. So we'll do 20 of these. And then um, we can fit them on here and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so let me get the glue gun heated up and then we'll start doing this. Okay, so the glue gun is hot and we're ready to go. I did a few of them. And the trick is to try to just put a little dot without too much. As you know, the string goes everywhere with glue guns. But it was either that or um, crazy glue, which I actually don't have right now. So anyway, so just glue this on. The sticky bottom on these does not stay on at all. <laughs> I tried it. So best thing to do is just glue. Okay, so I will do the rest of these and be back. Okay, so I finished putting the magnets on. What we need to do next is fill them with the paint. And I am going to use this specifically for the Horadam Aquarelle. And these are the super granulation paints, which are just beautiful, just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to put these in the pots. And then over here, I have the Aquarelle skin tones. Um, I like to do um, portraits. So I thought it would be nice to have these colors in watercolor as well. So first we'll do these and what I need to do first is write on the side the name of the color and then put the color in and put them aside. Okay, so let's do this first. I have I have the Forest Collection, which is Forest Olive, Forest Blue, Forest Brown, Forest Green, and Forest Gray. So one, two, three, four, five. So we'll get five out, we'll put these aside. Okay. right on the side. Okay, so the first one is Forest Olive. This is always difficult because it's so tiny. And remember, you need to use waterproof um, ink <laughs> on here because otherwise it'll turn out to be a big mush. Okay, so Forest Olive. Next is Forest Blue.
This one I'm curious. I purchased this just because I wanted this color. This is Tundra Orange and I couldn't get the full Tundra set but this color is fantastic. So uh, I'm wondering if this comes in a pan. So let's open that up and see. This one might already be done for us. Yes it is. Yes, it is. How awesome is that? Except it needs a magnet on the back, but that's okay. I will uh, put a magnet on. Okay, so this color is Tundra Orange. Is there okay now I'm gonna do these um, these five over here tell you what the colors are there's going to be galaxy violet which is oh, so beautiful I'm gonna swatch all these um, so you get to see the colors galaxy blue galaxy pink Galaxy Brown and Galaxy Black. Okay. Okay, now these are done. Okay, the next is going to be these skin skin tones. Excuse me, I do have the sniffles. Hay fever season is in full swing. Even with medicine, even with medicine, I still feel it. So <laughs> I can't imagine what I would be like if I didn't have medicine. Okay, so these colors are um, transparent okra, cobalt violet hue, Naples yellow reddish, transparent umber, Matter Brown and Sepia Brown. Okay, so let's get these going. So now we got them all done. It's time to put them in our pan. This one I, I have to put a magnet on too, but for now we can just put that there. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, so this is what I originally did and I was able to close it. Um, however, I found out that when you take a brush and you go to take some of it, what happens is they move around. Okay, so I did not like that. So I came up with a plan to put some borders in it to keep the pots from moving around. And what I found was these little dowels, these little, little wooden dowels. Um, you can get these in any craft store. You can get them on Amazon. Um, and I thought, what if I put, cut it, put it in there, and kind of sandwiched these between enough that you can still get them out, but to keep them from moving around. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so first we need to cut this the correct size and then uh, just to be nice and make it look nice, I'm gonna paint it white. And then we'll glue them in and we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's go. Okay, so the first thing is to measure them so that they fit in the tin. Just move these out of the way a little bit. This one I'll take out because I still have to put a magnet in there. Okay. Okay. So. It doesn't have to go all the way to the end. So I actually think I would like it to go um about there okay now these cutters they're kind of heavy duty cutters and they work fantastic for cutting little pieces of wood like this these you can get again um michael's um hobby lobby i think they have them in joann's i'm not 100 percent sure um and amazon so again i'll put the links um for everything but what you gotta do is kind of line it up. If you can see, you line it up with the line there. And then you just cut down and you have yourself a perfect piece of wood. So I'm gonna finish measuring these all out and then uh, paint them white. Okay, so I measured these out and cut them. And now we're gonna paint them white, just so they look a little bit nice. I just have plain old titanium white. And I'm just gonna put a little in this bowl. Okay. A little paper towel here, okay. And we'll just paint it white. It's not going to be the nicest looking thing, but I'm not going to worry about the bottom because that's just going to be um, glued. some on the bottom anyway, but <laughs> that's okay. Actually, I think this rough side is the side I'm going to put down because the glue can get into the, um, the little rough spots and, and hold it better, I think. So that's actually the better plan.
Okay. That's it. I'm only going to do one coat just so it looks nice. It's not, not a big deal. Okay, so here's the rough side again. I'm going to keep that down and not paint it. I'll just paint the top and the sides. Again, just one coat. Okay, so there we go. So now we just need to let these dry and then we'll glue them in. Okay, see you soon. you were wondering about that beautiful music that was just playing and that was also playing in the very beginning of this video. Um, it is called Fields of Sunflowers and it is written and performed by my nephew Ian Swank. So I will link below how to find it. Um, you can find him on SoundCloud and um, I just thought you would really enjoy hearing it. I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. Um, he is my nephew, but it's, it's gorgeous. So anyway, okay. So we are ready to glue these on. Okay, here's my bottom. So we're going to do this with, um, the, uh, glue gun as well. Hopefully it works. This is going to just go right in here. So I'm trying to decide if I should glue on here. Yeah, I guess I should glue on this, not here. Okay. So let's go with that and hope that that works. Okay, I hope this glue gun's warm enough, but we will see. Yes. Okay. Straight down. Okay. Okay. The glue guns really don't give you much of a chance to do anything before it dries, so you gotta move quick. <laughs> I've learned. Okay, so these are gonna go in here like that. Okay. This one is going to go uh, right about there, but I want to leave enough space so we can get these out. So, all right, let's, let's move these up slightly. Okay, let's go with this. Okay, the glue gun is nice and warm now, so this is going much easier. Okay. 
Right. They can still move around a little, but not, they can't get away from you, which is fine. And it works. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let's put these other ones in. Make sure. Yes, closes nice. Okay, thumbs up. Okay, last one. And it worked. Yay. <laughs> okay, so obviously I can do another one down here in case I want to add any more pans, which I will do. And then after that, I want to do um, a little swatch for the top. And then I have my own little custom watercolor palette which is fun okay so let me finish doing this and then we'll we'll go on to doing the uh, swatching okay okay you can see that I added the fourth little section there um, and it's keeping them in pretty good. I put these in here just as extras. And then this way, if I decide I want to add more paints, I have a few extras here. Oh, this one is actually stuck from the um, glue. <laughs> That's okay. And then of course I can add more. So, so this is my palette. So what I want to do is um, swatch everything. And then I'll put this in here and I'll have my little chart for the different colors. Okay, so. Um, I already put the names of everything. So the first one we're doing is Forest Gray. Actually, the best thing to do, I'll show you what I'm gonna do in a minute. Here have this spritzer which actually makes it gets everything wet okay okay so Forest gray. Next is forest green. The next is Forest Brown. The next is Forest Blue. And oh, that's a nice color. I like that. Wow, look at that. A nice, deep, rich blue. Really like that.
Beautiful color. Okay, Forest Olive is next. Ooh, I like that too. Nice. Okay, the next one is Galaxy Violet. These Galaxy colors are just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, Galaxy Blue. Okay, and the next is Galaxy Brown. And again, these are all schminky, Hordum, aquarels, the super granulation. And Galaxy Pink. Oh, I love that color. Very pretty. By the way, this paper that I'm swatching on is, let me show you. It's beautiful paper. It's by Cotty Papers. And uh, it's A3 size, so I basically just cut it out, cut, cut the proper section out. But these papers are just beautiful, and they're fantastic for watercolors and gouache. Um, it's 100% it's cotton rag, um, just, just gorgeous. So if you want to give them a try, you can check that out. Okay, next is Galaxy Black. I like that. I like that black. Okay, next is Cobalt Violet. I think now we're getting into um, some of the colors for um, for this, the skin colors, skin tones. Cobalt Violet is, is that. Okay, Transparent Ochre is the next one. Okay, the next is Naples Yellow. That is really nice. Pretty color for skin. OK, 
Okay, next is Transparent Umber. Wow, these colors are all fantastic for skin. I can't wait, can't wait to try to, to use them. I am fairly new when it comes to watercolors, um, so they are still quite the challenge for me. I typically work in oils and um, acrylics and also pastels and oil pastels. Okay, the next is Matter Brown. Man, wow, another great color. Okay, and next is sepia brown. Get that off there, okay. Oh wow, look at that. That's amazing. Wow, I really like that. And the last one, oh, the last one is the Tundra Orange. I hope you'll be able to see how fantastic this color is. Uh, it's very hard to see on here, but just a swatch, but it it's really a beautiful, beautiful color. great for landscapes and when you're doing the ground, um, autumn leaves, everything. And there you go. So there's what I have in this palette. And then um, when it's dry, oh, let's see, a little bit of water in there, so I don't want to, to get it wet. Okay, so when this is completely dry, I'll put this in here. I'll probably put it face down, so this way, if any of this gets on there, it's not going to ruin it. And then this will be my setup. So I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. And the one thing you do have to do, and I don't think I have it. I don't have one up here with me. But in order to keep this closed, you do need to put um, like a hair, a hair rubber band around this. And it just keeps it tight. And then this way, it'll all stay where it's supposed to. And it'll be fine for when you open it up. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this. This one I did do. I still haven't done. I did do the swatches on this one. Um, but I still haven't done the dividers on it. But I'm going to do that next. So uh, this one's all set too. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for coming along with me. And... I will see you soon. See you soon. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye, everybody.